Vice Chancellor, honored guests, friends and colleagues, welcome to this very special and happy occasion. I duly declare the congregation for the installation of our new Chancellor open. Please be seated. Pro Chancellor, distinguished guests and colleagues, I am very pleased to announce that James Timpson, OBE, is present today for installation as Chancellor of this university. And I call upon Pro Vice Chancellors, Professor Chris Spellman Miller and Professor Erin Adirasinghe to conduct the Chancellor designate his chair, to his chair of office. Would the congregation please stand? I call upon community representatives to bid the Chancellor designate to his chair of office. On behalf of the county and people of Staffordshire, I invite James Timpson, OBE, to take up the office of Chancellor of Keele University. May he be a beacon for integrity and an ambassador of this university and the county of Staffordshire. On behalf of the community of Newcastle under Lyme, I invite James Timpson, OBE, to take up the office of Chancellor of Keele University. May he be granted wisdom and courage in carrying out his duties. On behalf of all Keele students, past and present, I invite James Timpson, OBE, to take up the office of Chancellor of Keele University. May he be an inspiration to us all and a guardian of all that is right and just. Please be seated. Pro Chancellor, distinguished guests, colleagues, and friends. James Timpson, OBE, describes himself as a cobbler, prison recruiter, believer in upside down management, colleagues, not staff, and being a great boss. And his philosophy is simple. Everything you do should make your grand proud. James is the fifth generation of his family to lead the family business. And today, on this wonderful occasion for Keele University and for his family and friends, we install him as our fifth chancellor, like his gran. We are all very proud of his many achievements, honors, and awards. And we are especially proud to install James as our new chancellor. James is an extraordinarily successful businessman. He is chief executive of one of our most loved high street retailers. But he is also a dynamic and staunch leader for social justice. His inventive and innovative approach to business is grounded in a deep-seated belief in the potential of everyone. Keele University shares this inclusivity purpose. It's, it's why Keele was created. In the five years up to 2018-2019, we doubled the number of students we recruited from the most disadvantaged communities in England. Almost 20% of our current students come from underprivileged backgrounds. We recognize and nurture the potential in all our students and we work closely with our communities to enhance knowledge and practices of socially responsible business, social justice, and social inclusion. Our Keele Institute for Social Inclusion, like James, is a particular beacon for, key, for driving social change. Today, we celebrate James' inclusion into our community, and we look forward to working with him in our shared purpose. James started work as a cobbler, age 14, returning to work in the family business after studying geography at Durham University. 
after becoming Managing Director of Timson in 2002 and Chief Executive in 2013, he embarked on what his father, John, called crazy schemes to grow the business. These so-called crazy schemes not only led to commercial set success, an eight-fold increase in the size of Timson, they also led to transformation, transformative business practices that would impact prisoner rehabilitation and reduce reoffending across the UK. James states that one of his greatest achievements is contributing to a shift in public attitudes towards former offenders. His unswerving commitment to support what he calls returning citizens means that, despite unhelpful red top newspaper headlines, the general public no longer thinks it wrong that many former burglars are trained to cut keys. James is grateful for the trust his father has showed in him, and it is a pleasure to welcome Sir John here today. A trust that has enabled James to transform the business. There are now over 2,000 Timson, Timson shops, employing over 4,500 people. James has led the diversification of the Timson business to include watch repairs, photo processing, dry cleaning and engraving, three gastro pups and pop-up barber shops. And he has pioneered the development of the pod supermarket model of business. James has achieved this commercial success by doing things differently. Timson is a culturally driven business structured around what they call an upside down management system where colleagues who are customer facing, some of whom are here in the audience today, are the most important part of the business and are trusted to go with their own ideas to create excellent customer service. James's role and that of others who work behind the scenes is to support and inspire the colleagues who work with customers. His upside down management approach gives colleagues who put the money in the till responsibility to run the shop, creating a dynamic culture where people are trusted to give their ideas a go. The company takes care to select people with the right personalities and they're expected to perform well. James explains this, the common sense in his approach. If you treat people well, it's blindingly obvious that they will do a good job. Treating colleagues well includes, among other things, access to free holiday homes, the company limousine for weddings, paid holidays for birthdays, a child's first school day, and becoming a grandparent. James's message to others is a simple one. Your success is determined by the achievements and happiness of those who you report to. To ensure the happiness of colleagues, Timson has a director of happiness. It's no wonder that Timson always features in the top 10 Sunday Times 100 best companies to work for. The Timson business is not only commercially successful, but it's also a socially responsible business. The Timson Group includes a foundation that specialises in the recruitment of people from marginalised groups in society. Timson doesn't just make a profit, it changes the lives of the most disadvantaged due to James' commitment to giving people a second chance. One, person was a one such person was a prison inmate who James met during a prison tour. James recognised the talent in the young man and told him there would be a job waiting for him with Timson upon his release. And James gave him his business card to cement that offer. This encounter was a catalyst for, for probably what James's father thought was the craziest of his son's business ideas, actively recruiting former offenders to work in the family business. Since 2013, Tom Timson has employed some 500 former inmates and is now the largest UK employer of former offenders. The company also funds specialist training academies in several prisons to provide pre-release training opportunities for future employees in a range of job-ready skills. Understandably, in the prison, that doesn't include key cutting. James is, compassionate, James is a compassionate business leadership goes beyond his chief executive role in Timson. During his time as chair of the Employers Forum for Reducing Reoffending, James inspired and steered other companies to provide employment opportunities for former prison inmates. James led the development of employment advisory boards in more than 40 prisons, whose purpose is to create a long-term culture of employment in prisons 
support inmates in being job ready upon release, and develop strong links with local employers. James also chairs the Prison Reform Trust and supports several prison charities. While James rightly points out that former offenders provide a large talent pool for companies, and it's simply smart business, a smart business decision to tap into that pool, he also believes companies should have an impact upon their communities, especially disadvantaged ones. Until 2021, James wrote a regular column for the business pages of the Sunday Times in one article titled, Helping Society is the Civilised Way to Do Business. James argues that the more companies get involved in supporting their communities, the more colleagues have pride in the company and the stronger the company becomes. James' value-driven, inventive approach to business and his passionate commitment to supporting disadvantaged communities have led to numerous awards and honours. In 2011, he was awarded an OBE for services to training and employment for disadvantaged people. In 2012, he was appointed as the David Goldman Visiting Professor of Innovation at Newcastle Business School University. In 2015, he received the Albert Medal from the Royal Society of Arts and was also appointed His Royal Highness Princess of Wales, Ambassador for Responsible Business in the North West. In 2016, he appeared in the Sunday Times 500 Most Influential list. In 2019, he was awarded Leader of the Year at the Lloyds Bank National Business Awards and was also appointed Deputy Lieutenant of Cheshire. In 2021, the Prime, the Prime Minister reappointed James as a trustee of the Tate. Keel is honoured and proud to install James Timpson as Chancellor on the historic day for the university. He is an extraordinary business leader, a resolute reformer and an exceptional person. James can boast, not that he would, of a substantial impact in areas that are at the very core of the purpose of Keel University. Socially responsible business, social inclusion and supporting disadvantaged communities. Keel looks forward to working with James to further enhance our achievements in these critically important areas here on campus, in Staffordshire and beyond. Pro-Chancellor, on behalf of Keel University, it gives me great pleasure to present to you our new Chancellor, James Timpson, OBE. James Timpson, by virtue of my authority as pro-chancellor and on behalf of Senate and the Council of the University, I invite you to take the office of chancellor of, the, of this university. Do you wish to accept that invitation? I do. I hereby declare that I will at all times and seasons fulfill the duties of Chancellor as required by the Charter of the University and will loyally uphold and maintain the privileges and rights of the University and will endeavour to promote the purposes for which this University exists and this is my solemn affirmation. James Timpson, you have duly declared the Chancellor's oath and I therefore install you as Chancellor of this university. Thank Congratulations. You very much.
Pro-Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, Kiel colleagues, distinguished guests, family and friends. This is a very special day for everyone whose life Kiel has touched. And I'm lucky to be joined by my wonderful wife, Rasheen, alongside my dad, John. While today is very much a celebration and the start of a new, exciting journey, it's also poised with sadness. I know how proud my late mother, Alex, an inspirational woman, would have been to, to be at today's ceremony, seeing me installed as only the university's fifth chancellor in its remarkable history. I'm also here with my colleagues, Darren and Anthony, both amazing people who I was fortunate to first meet when they were in prison and have both gone on to develop successful careers within our family business. In fact, Anthony runs the shop that's nearest to here and some of you, I'm sure, are regular customers. Like Keel, the Timpson business is one big family. And I feel very much at home here already. Trevor, Louise, and the team have been so kind in guiding me to this day, as of all those in the Keel community who suggested I would make a good chancellor. Thank you to you all. Donna, thank you also for your very generous oration relayed in such a positive tone and I suspect may be written after Manchester City secured the top spot on the last day of the season. <laughs> I'm honoured and humbled to be asked to take on this role, so thank you for letting me represent and support you all. I'm really looking forward to getting stuck in. Our daughter Neve and our youngest son Patrick are, are still at university, while our eldest son Bede has already graduated. They know what university life is like nowadays, so I asked them what they thought as Chancellor, I should say today to all the students and staff. Without any hesitation, they said, we'd want you to say, the drinks are on me. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's too early in the day for that, so instead I'll share some thoughts on how I intend to fulfill my role as your Chancellor. When I first met Trevor, toured the campus, and met a number of colleagues and students, I came away with a good feeling about taking on the role. The good feeling came from the fact we share the same values. The values of kindness, ambition, trust and equality are the foundations in the way I operate, the way our businesses run and the way the university is governed. And it's also, on, it's also the way I want to carry out my role as your Chancellor. I also believe in second chances. Judging people by who they are now, not just by their past, is something that I believe leads to a more diverse, successful community and one I, I am ambitious for at Keele. Graduation ceremonies, which my first one will be in a few weeks' time, is a celebration of young people's incredible achievements, students who learned, and staff who've taught. It's a privilege to play a small part in a family's celebration of three or even seven years of hard work and financial commitment, resulting in a degree and a passport to a successful career ahead. In true Timpson style, we should also celebrate the support staff who made the whole thing possible. None of us could play our part if it wasn't for them. The cleaners and gardeners are equally as important to making this place work and our students accepting their degrees as those colleagues on the council or the Senate. This is my style of leadership, recognising the role we all play equally to support each other to be our best selves. I hope to do what John Wesley said, do all the good I can, by all the means I can, in all the ways I can, in all the places I can, at all the times I can, to all the people I can, for as long as I can. We don't live too far away, just the other side of Delamere Forest in Cheshire. And being a retailer with over 2,000 shops across the country, it won't surprise you to know that, bar Eddie Stobart lorries, over the years I must have driven past Keel on the M6 or sat in stationary traffic on it more than most of you. And being a Bristol car enthusiast and with little mechanical knowledge, I'm surprised I haven't yet experienced life on the hard shoulder here either, but I suspect my time will come. Like many Keele students have done over the years, I met my wife Rasheen at university. I first set eyes on her in the library at Durham, a place admittedly we weren't regulars at. So it was fortuitous that we decided to get some books out that day. Rasheen was studying anthropology while I, while I did geography. Durham in 1994 was, like Keele, a very different university than it is today. It's evolved as the communities which it serves has evolved. Every Saturday, I played rugby against the local Durham club teams. 
mostly made up of men who had been laid off from the pits. They were hard, proud sons and fathers who had little hope of a job at the time or making a living. Some took their anger out on me and my fellow students while on the pitch, but by the time we arrived in the clubhouse after the match, we were welcomed with open arms, a warm pint of Newcastle brown ale and good humour. I suspect Keel Rugby alumni of that time will tell a similar story of playing teams from the potteries, where a similar industrial decline was taking place. While I couldn't help solve their problems away from the rugby pitch, it gave me an awareness of the lack of opportunity some people unfairly suffer. No matter what life throws at us, we all want the best for our families. And if you can help someone do this even in a small way, there is no better feeling in the world. And this is what a university experience does. Unlike Keele, Durham has a prison in the middle of the town, in the shadow of the many academic departments and student facilities in the, in the, in the city centre. The nearest I got to it then was a regular lunch that consisted of a pint of Castle Eden and a croque monsieur, all for the total princely sum of £2.10 at the Court Inn, whose walls bordered the jail. While that pub is now closed, the prison still has a commanding yet remote presence in the town. And when our daughter Neve went for her induction day a couple of years ago, we had a few hours spare. So I managed to phone the governor and get an invite and a tour of the prison for us. It's certainly not what everyone would see as a good day out, or for that matter, what most students expect from their first day at university. But when your parents are fascinated by people fulfilling their potential, it's bizarrely one of the most inspirational places you can go to. I also never miss an opportunity to meet talented people who may want to work in our business. Seeing Darren and Anthony here today proves that future stars can be found in the most unusual places. Like all of us here and the students who will join Keel in the future, we all deserve an opportunity to be our best and make our parents proud. No matter what our, no matter what our background, where we live in the world, or the choices we have made in the past. Kiel is a special place. It's unconventional, different. It could even be considered a bit eccentric. This is what makes it so special and inspirational. And in some ways, it reminds me very much of our business. We've never followed the crowd. We've kept to our values and have done it our way, even when others think we should conform. From paying everyone 100% of their wages throughout COVID, to having the 20 holiday homes where colleagues go on free holidays, to giving everyone their birthday off, and recruiting hundreds of great people from prison. We believe in doing things differently alongside a culture of kindness. This is the best way to run a company, or any organization for that matter. And it's not what they teach you in business schools yet, but it works. But being different, to me, is a massive plus. Being confident at being different is the icing on the cake. My predecessor as chancellor, Jonathan Porritt, has been an inspiration in the role his focus on our environment, the role Kiel has, has as a leading academic institution in combating climate change and helping the world reduce the amount of carbon we use has been a force for good here and further afield. While I'm sure at times the challenge was difficult, we have to remember that achieving great things is never easy. What has been achieved at Kiel by those of you here today and those you succeeded has set the pace at the heart of the challenges we face. The world is a confusing, sometimes threatening place, but where a community like Kiel takes its role to inspire students and through rigorous research find solutions to these big, difficult problems, we can all benefit. A few years ago, I saw a poster that had a very simple message spelt out in seven words. Work hard and be kind to people. I can think of no better guide to me in my role as your chancellor. I will work hard to ensure I represent everyone in the Kiel community, to get to know you and offer challenge where it's needed. For me, the most important role I have, though, as your Chancellor, is to be kind. So it's, with, so it's with great appreciation, huge admiration for this university, and with a big dollop of kindness that I start my role today. Thank you very much for having me as your Chancellor. Chancellor, 
<clears throat> Excuse me. Congratulations and welcome to Kiel. The excitement at the time of the announcement of your appointment was tangible right across campus and I hope that we can provide you with an experience that is both enjoyable and rewarding. Higher education is an in interesting place at the moment. I can promise you excitement. I can promise you frustration. It won't be boring unless I talk for too long this afternoon. And you will meet some fantastic staff, students and partners. And it is those people that make Kiel what it is, and I'm confident that meeting them will absolutely be the highlight of your tenure. We will always be a university on a human scale, and recent analysis by our DVC and Provost demonstrates that we are amongst a very small group of universities that does research well while providing a very strong student experience. We are also a university that believes that we need to put a lot of effort into providing benefit to the communities around us. And it is this combination of things that makes Kiel that bit different from most other universities. We published a new strategy in 2019 called Our Future, and it was based around five Ps. Purpose, people, partnerships, place, and performance. To quote the opening paragraph of the vision in that document, it says that we will deliver a strong future for Kiel by harnessing a culture of engagement inclusion and cohesion that allows a progressive view of the world to flourish and gives our staff, students and graduates the skills and opportunities to thrive. Our purpose is built on the belief that we can be, and indeed are, truly transformational for the people that we work with. Central to this is how we prepare our students, not just for their first job, which we must absolutely do, but we must prepare them to be adaptable to the uncertainty and the changes that they will encounter during their lifetime, both at home and at work. This is achieved by giving them a set of experiences that really can make them different, by giving them a broad perspective on life through, from what they learn and who they interact with. Two weeks ago, I had one of my favorite afternoons of the year when we interviewed four candidates for our Student of the Year Award. They were all truly fantastic individuals that had grasped opportunities, indeed made their own opportunities, capitalised on what they'd learned and who they'd met, and by their own descriptions, were very different people from the people they were when they arrived here at Kiel at the beginning of their programmes. They were all doing very well academically, which is a core criterion for the Neil and Gina Smith Award, but they had been active right across the Kiel community in ways that was exhausting just listening to them. They supported each other within their subject groups and beyond. They helped influence their curriculum. They were influential at a national level. And at a personal level, they all exuded a confidence that they said they just didn't have before. We cannot deny that an important role for universities is to get people into employment and make a difference to society. But it is a critical message that universities are hugely transformational for our students in ways that can't be reflected just in how much money they are earning relative to any, every other student in the country a short time after they leave university. The four students I met that, on that afternoon demonstrate that in abundance. They will have an impact that goes way beyond anything that can be easily measured in league tables. The challenges that we face as a university sector and as a university are not trivial. The current funding environment for universities in the UK is difficult and unsustainable. The range of things that we are asked to do and that we need to do are increasing. The jobs that all our staff do are effectively changing almost constantly. And all of this is clearly set against an economic environment and the difficult international environment that makes these things even harder. But just as we prepare our students to be adaptable and resilient in a changing world, as a university, as a whole, we also need to adapt these characteristics. As they say, change is the only constant, and of course we've all seen that in abundance through the last two years of a global pandemic. At Kiel we've changed a lot in the last few years, and change isn't always easy. And the changes we've made haven't been made any easier by the pandemic that we've been going through. But the new teaching programmes that we've developed, the changes that we've made to the way we do things on campus, our push on sustainability and energy independence in particular, 
have required enormous effort by staff. Some aspects still need work to get them right, but they've put us in a position where we can be ambitious and enthusiastic about the future. The plans that we now have in place for further development and growth of our teaching portfolio, the increased diversification of our student body and staff body, together with the even bigger role that we have to play in a part of the country that is clearly identified as part of the government's levelling up agenda, as well as new patterns of research funding, all provide significant opportunities for Kiel. These will all need a concerted and energetic approach in which we all support each other as members of the Kiel community. But by doing that, and actually putting all of these plans into action, Kiel has an exciting decade ahead, in which we will be more in control of our own fate, and we will be more able to make decisions based on what we want to do, rather than being totally responsive to what is forced upon us. Through this, we will have a bigger impact on the people we work with and on society more broadly. And that means our reputation and our place in society will be enhanced and will be even higher than it is now. We will continue to put our shoulder to the wheel as we do our bit to help address the climate emergency. And that will be through our research and education and by what we do here on campus. We've done a lot and our award of Global Sustainability University of the Year has been a recognition of that. But we should, we can, and we will do more. For example, as Chancellor, you will be a continuous reminder of the importance of business with a social conscience and the work we do with our business students as well as the support we give local businesses on sustainability will be an important part of this. We firmly believe that Kiel has an important place in this region and beyond on national and international stages. We are and will remain relatively small compared with most other universities, but by having and supporting high quality staff that continue to be devoted to the joint research and education agenda that competes with the best, and with a diverse group of students who are determined and dedicated to their personal growth and development, and a set of external partners who see us as reliable and high quality collaborators, Kiel can and will go from strength to strength. And Chancellor, it's a pleasure to have you on board for that journey. Can I invite you all to stand? Before I declare the ceremony um, has closed, I'd just like to say thank you very much to everybody who's made today possible. For everybody in the Kiel community who asked me to be the Chancellor, from all of the students and the staff and everybody who works here, but also thanks to everybody who put today and made it all happen. Now I've seen only a, only a little bit of what's gone on behind the scenes um, and I know an awful lot has gone into it, so thank you to everybody from the sound crew to the film crew, to everybody organising it, to the caterers and everybody. So thank you very much. And I hope and look forward to meeting as many of you as possible over, over my years as Chancellor. And in a few weeks' time, when we have our first um, degree ceremonies, I hope to see many of you then as well. So thank you very much. And I declare today has closed. <laughs>